Hey my future aunts, welcome back. Today's video is on heparin. If you are a currently a practicing nurse at bedside, you probably have experience initiating and titrating heparin based on protocol. But what if the procedures at your workplace has changed? Maybe they already have. Do you feel confident initiating a heparin drip? Well, this video is going to review heparin, heparin protocols, and teach you how to calculate it so you could feel confident next time you have to take care of a patient on that heparin drip. Stay tuned. Hey, my future ends. Welcome back. So, you just got a patient who's in atrial fibrillation and you just got an order to initiate heparin drip. What do you do? Let's call the pharmacy. They could take care of everything. Hello, pharmacy. Heparin calculation. Are you the nurse? Nope. It's your responsibility now. So don't worry, we got you. Before we get into the content, if you are new to this channel, please click the subscribe, like, and notify button, and you'll be up to date as to all the content we're putting out. Heparin is an anticoagulant. It decreases your body's clotting ability and prevents harmful clots from forming in the blood vessels. It is used to prevent and treat thrombotic events such as deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, and atrial fibrillation. For patients who require long-term anticoagulation, heparin will be used as a bridge to oral warfarin therapy. Heparin is classified as a high alert medication, which means it can cause serious injury or death. The United States Pharmacopeia listed heparin as one of the top 10 medications most frequently involved in medication errors. Heparin may be given as a continuous IV infusion or a sub-Q injection depending on the indication. There are many concentrations of heparin, ranging from 1 unit to 20,000 units. So carefully examine each pre-fill syringe and vial before administration. Adverse reactions to heparin include bleeding, thrombocytopenia, and reaction at the injection site. Bleeding is a major complication associated with heparin use. Bleeding may also present as bruising, petechial rash, and nosebleeds. So be sure to educate your patient on how to assess bleeding in the urine and stool. About 30% of patients on heparin will experience some sort of thrombocytopenia. However, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or HIT, is more serious. There are two types of HIT. Type 1 is a non-immunogenic, which means the immune system is not involved. This results in a drop of platelets that typically occur within 48 to 72 hours after heparin is initiated. The decrease in platelets is usually temporary and the platelets will recover once the heparin has been discontinued. The second type of HIT, HIT with two Ts, is an immune-mediated thrombocytopenia. It occurs when the heparin binds to the protein platelet factor 4. It creates a prothrombotic environment where you have thrombus formation with low platelets. This usually occurs about five days into heparin therapy. This condition puts your patient at great risk for PE, DVT, stroke, and MI. If you suspect hit in your patient, ask to draw a PF4, which is a blood test to confirm hit. If you are administering heparin, you should know the antidote in case complications occur. Protamine is a medication used to reverse and neutralize the anticoagulant effects of heparin. How do we know when our heparin is therapeutic? We do this by assessing the activated partial throplastin time, APTT, and activated clotting time, ACT. 
which is expected to be prolonged during heparin therapy. ACT is less sensitive than APTT, so we're going to focus on APTT. APTT is drawn at baseline and then Q6 hours until two or more therapeutic values are obtained. Then they are assessed every 24 hours. You titrate the heparin drip based on your APTT result. Let's take a look of a weight-based heparin protocol example. Notice it tells you how much to bolus a patient according to their weight. You need to know their weights in kilograms. Then it tells you how to titrate your heparin drip according to the results of your APTT. Now that you have some knowledge on heparin, let's apply this to a patient case. AP is a 71-year-old African-American female. She's a retired teacher. She came into the ER with complaints of lightheadedness and palpitations for the past two days. She has a past medical history of hypertension, diabetes, type 2, GERD. She has some TIAs in the past, and she suffers from anxiety. Allergies to sulfur. A 12-lead EKG showed atrial fibrillation at a rate of 125 beats per minute. Her admitting diagnosis is new onset AFib. Here's our orders. Take a look. Now that we have drawn our baseline APTT, we're going to start with the bolus at 80 units per kilogram. We are ready to calculate. Please note, we're going to be using dimensional analysis to solve all our calculations. If you're not familiar with dimensional analysis, please feel free to check out our tutorials in our channel. The order states, bolus with heparin, 80 units per kilogram. The client weighs 70 kilograms and the availability is 5,000 units per ml. We're looking for units per dose. The order is for 80 units per kilogram. The patient weighs 70 kilograms. We'll multiply across and the answer is 5,600 units. Most protocols have a maximum dosage for heparin bolus administration, ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 units, depending on the situation. In this case, the maximum dosage is 5,000 units. So therefore, this patient is gonna get 5,000 units or one ml of heparin. Now let's set up our continuous infusion. The order is for heparin 18 units per kilogram per hour. The patient weighs 70 kilograms. The drug is avail available at 25,000 units in 250 mLs of D5W. Here's our setup. We're looking for mLs per hour to set up our pump. The availability is 250 mLs over 25,000 units. The order, 18 units over a kilogram over an hour, and the patient weighs 70 kilograms. Multiply across and then divide, and their answer is 12.6 mLs per hour. It's been six hours since the infusion. Now it's time to draw your APTT. The APTT results just came in. It's 75. According to the protocol, we need to decrease the infusion rate by two units per kilogram per hour. So let's do our titration calculation. According to the protocol, we have to decrease the infusion by two units per kilogram per hour. It's the same procedure, but instead of using 18 units per kilogram per hour, we're gonna be using 16 units per kilogram per hour. You're gonna multiply across and then divide, and our answer is 11.2 mLs per hour. Now it's time to document. Be sure to document the time APTT was drawn, any APTT results, any boluses that was given. Document rate changes in units per hour. 
anytime the infusion was stopped, the current infusion rate, and the next time an APTT needs to be drawn. Don't forget your RN and your initials. Congratulations, future RN. You've just completed your first heparin protocol. Miss AP, your patient, is very pleased and she wants to say thank you for being such a great nurse. See you on your next shift.